Hello everyone, Mizio here. This year is notable because for once in my life I've actually seen the majority of movies nominated for Oscars this year. Every year before this I've seen only usually one of the movies nominated so I've wanted that movie to get everything even if it wasn't a very good movie. So I figured since I've seen the majority of things and I'm actually informed about the nominations this year I would do an Oscar prediction video. So this video I'm just going to be discussing the categories and the people and movies nominated for certain things and I'll say what I think should win and what will probably win. So without further ado, let's get on to it. And of course I've printed out my little papers here with the list of things nominated because I don't have very good memory and I can't memorize all of the things just off the top of my head. So okay, let's see. Actor in a leading role. I've seen all of the ones nominated in this one, except for Beautiful, and Xavier Bardem, who I like, um, he's in Country, No Country for Old Men. Um, he was nominated for, in a, for a foreign film called Beautiful, and I have not seen that one. I wanted to see that one because it looks like a movie I would like, but I did not get the chance to see that. But I've seen everything else nominated in that category. We have Jeff Bridges for True Grit, Jesse Eisenberg for Social Network, Colin Firth for, Colin Firth for The King's Speech, and James Franco for 127 Hours. There's some tight competition. So I was going to go with Jeff Bridges at first for True Grit because he was fantastic in that role. But after seeing The King's Speech, Colin Firth was really amazing in that role. Um, both roles, I think they had to probably put a lot into them. And I would not be... I would be happy if either of them got it. Jeff Bridges is certainly my second choice, but I think I'm going to have to go with Colin Firth. Especially since uh, Jeff Bridges actually did get the Oscar for Crazy Heart Best Actor last year. So I'll maybe give Colin Firth a bit of a chance. James Franco and Jesse Eisenberg, they were both really, really fantastic in their movies, too. Each person that I saw, at least, was really good in their roles in this category. But I'm still just gonna have to go with those two, even if I like all of the nominations. I think, though, that Colin Firth is going to get it for that movie. So, I don't know, it's pretty, pretty cut and dry, that category, I think. So, moving on, we've got Actor in a Supporting Role. Now the nominations for this category are Christian Bale in The Fighter, John Hawks in Winter's Bone, Jeremy Renner in The Town, Mark Ruffalo in The Kids Are Alright, and Jeffrey Rush in King's Speech. Now The Town is the only movie in this category I've not seen so I can't really make a judgment on that, but I've seen all the other ones and out of these picks I would probably have to go with Christian Bale for The Fighter. Jeffrey Rush is probably my second choice. Both roles were very, very good. Um, but I think it takes a certain talent to be able to pull off a drug addict really well. I, I've seen movies like Train Spotting, Spun, and you have to be a really talented actor to do it convincingly. And Christian Bale is just really good in that role. Jeffrey Rush was really good in his role too, and if a, similar to the actor in a leading role. Um, if either of them got it, I would be happy, but my first pick is probably Christian Bale. Um, John Hawks in Winter's Bone was, was pretty good. He didn't have a huge role in the movie. I mean, I guess it was fairly significant, but, I mean, it wasn't really anything too spectacular. He was good in it, but, I don't know. I don't, it wasn't Oscar-worthy. Same thing with Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo was... He had a very significant role in The Kids Are All Right, larger than John Hawks. He's not a very good actor. I mean, uh, uh, okay, maybe that's... It's not that he's a bad actor, just that God, it's not Oscar-worthy. It's just not. I mean, I like him, but he, he's not an Oscar actor, so to speak. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Christian Bale on that. I think it's definitely between Christian Bale and Jeffrey Rush as far as who is probably going to get it. I think that considering King's Speech will probably run away with most of the awards, there is actually a pretty decent chance that Jeffrey Rush will get it for the King's Speech. 
but at the same time a lot of people say Christian Bale too so it could go either way that one. Now we have actress in a leading role and I'm not quite as informed on this category as I'd like to be but we have Annette Benning for The Kids Are All Right, Nicole Kidman for Rabbit Hole, Jennifer Lawrence in Winter's Bone, Natalie Portman in Black Swan, and Michelle Williams in Blue Valentine. Now I haven't seen Rabbit Hole or Blue Valentine, though the latter, Blue Valentine, is a movie that I would like to see, but I just was not able to, unfortunately, before the Oscars. Uh, Rabbit Hole, Nicole Kidman kind of annoys me, so meh, I don't really have much interest in that. Nicole Kidman also is not a good actress. The only things I liked her in were Moulin Rouge and The Others. I don't know how popular The Others is. I haven't ever heard it even referenced, but she's just not a good actress and she certainly isn't worthy of getting an Oscar. I'm definitely gonna have to go with Natalie Portman for Black Swan on this. She was just so amazing in that role. Y you're just... You, you were just blown away by how convincing she was in that. She was simply amazing, and it, it just makes me respect her even more as an actress now. And I liked her before I saw Black Swan, but she was just so, so good in this role. Annette Benning would probably be my second choice. She was, she was very good, and the kids are alright. Um, Jennifer Lawrence. I'm actually surprised that she was nominated for this. Kind of like, um, John Hawks for actor in a supporting role. She was good. She was very good in her role, but I don't know if I would go as far as to say it was Oscar worthy. I would actually go as far to say that Haley Steinfeld, the girl in True Grit, she deserves the nomination for actress in a leading role much more than Jennifer Lawrence in Winter's Bone. So yeah, and Natalie Portman I think is pretty cut and dry. She's gonna get this one. <laughs> I don't think anyone is disputing that. Okay, actress in a supporting role. Amy Adams, The Fighter, Helena Bonham Carter, The King's Speech, Melissa Leo, The Fighter, interesting that two women from one movie are being nominated in, in this category, Elise Steinfeld in True Grit, and Jackie Weaver in Animal Kingdom. I haven't seen Animal Kingdom, um, so no opinion on that, but I'm definitely gonna go with Haley Steinfeld and True Grit for this one. Second choice would probably be Helena Bonham Carter, and I think... Uh, I'm not sure. This one is actually kind of tough to decide. I mean, it's no question for me. I would love to see Haley Steinfeld get it, but I'm not sure if she's going to, in part because of her age. I mean, she's going up against Helena Bonham Carter. I would go as far to say, though, like I said before, Haley Steinfeld it wasn't a supporting role. She was the main character. Maybe it's just because of her age that she wasn't nominated in Best Actress, but I, I think she deserves that nomination much more than Jennifer Lawrence from Winter's Bone. I mean, that's just me, but at least if Haley Steinfeld is nominated in this category, supporting role, she has a chance, whereas if she went up against Natalie Portman, she wouldn't have a chance. And even I would be kind of conflicted on which one to pick. But as it is, I would love Haley Steinfeld to get this. But as far as who probably will get it, I'm not completely sure. Melissa Leo may very well get it, actually. I'm not quite sure why. She's actually the last one I would pick out of this entire category. I mean, she was good in her role. She played like the you know, piece of crap mother in The Fighter, but she's just not my first choice. I would even prefer Amy Adams to get it, but again, they're not my first choice. Haley Steinfeld is, so I'm really hoping Haley Steinfeld gets it for True Grit, but she, she probably won't, unfortunately. Helen Bonham Carter may very well get it too. Okay, animated feature film. Toy Story 3 is gonna get it. It's not really even an issue there. Toy Story 3 is also the only one I've seen in this category. I don't know how the other movies are. I haven't even heard The Illusionist before it was nominated. So, I mean, yeah, I guess I'll go with Toy Story 3 on that one. Even though it's actually a slight disappointment for me, but whenever I'll get on to that later. Art direction. Okay, we have Alice in Wonderland. Bleh. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one. Mm. Inception and the King's Speech, I think. Oh, uh, True Grit. Um, in this one, I would have to go with probably uh, the King's Speech or True Grit. Alice in Wonderland was just full of CGI, and I'm just simply tired of it. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows didn't really offer anything new. I mean, sure, the effects were good, but 
there wasn't anything, oh my god, spectacular. Inception was very good, but as far as like the actual artistic direction of the movie, I would have to go with either King's Speech or True Grit. I'm not sure which one is gonna get this category. It may very well be Alice in Wonderland. That god, even though I hated that movie, I swear, it was one of the more worst movies I've ever seen. I know everyone loves it, but I hated it. <laughs> uh, King's Speech will actually probably get this one. Cinematography. This is totally cut and dry for me. I know what I want. Black Swan, Inception, The King's Speech, The Social Network, or True Grit. Black Swan. The cinematography in that movie was just extraordinary. The way things were shot, you know, when the actual ballets were going on, it, or even when it zoomed in onto Natalie Portman's foot as she was lacing up her shoe, it was just so well shot. And I think the cinematography of a movie of a movie really, really, really matters. It just it amplifies the whole feel of the movie, and it really gives you a distinctive feel. So I'm definitely gonna go have to go with Black Swan on that one. And I think I think once again the King's Speech might get that one. I think the King's Speech is gonna get most of the awards, but yeah, I'm gonna definitely have to go with Black Swan on that one. Costume design. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. I Am Love, which I haven't seen. The King's Speech. The Tempest, which I also have not seen. I haven't even heard of I Am Love or The Tempest. I have no idea what those movies are. Or True Grit. Um, Alice in Wonderland. No. King's Speech or True Grit. I loved how- I just love the look of the the era of True Grit. I love just how everyone is dressed there and everything. So I personally will have to go with True Grit on this one, but I think the King's Speech will probably get it. Directing. We have Black Swan, The Fighter, The King's Speech, The Social Network, or True Grit. Now, okay, when I saw 127 Hours, my immediate thought was, wow, Danny Boyle should totally get the nom the um, the award for directing for this movie. This movie is so well directed. But then I went on and saw the nominations again, and I found out that he was not nominated in this category. Can someone explain that to me? Just, can anyone tell me why Danny Boyle is not nominated for directing for 127 hours? That movie was really, really, really well directed. God. But I guess out of all these picks after that, I would have to go with The Social Network, surprisingly enough. Surprisingly enough, because you'll see some of my thoughts on that movie later on. But, um, yeah, out of all of these, it'll probably be between The King's Speech and Social Network. But I personally am wanting The Social Network to get it, because that movie was really well directed. And once again, like, with the cinematography, how a movie is directed really goes towards the whole feel of the thing. And that was just... It was really well directed. Film editing. Black Swan, The Fighter, The King's Speech, 127 Hours, and The Social Network. Now this is pretty cut and dry for me. 127 Hours. That was really well edited and if it's not nominated for directing it should be... It should get film editing. It was... It, it's hard to pull off a split screen effect in a movie without being annoying. I'm just gonna remind you guys of The Fourth Kind to show you examples of bad split screen that totally just make the whole movie really annoying and 127 hours it it actually did the split screen effect and it did it really really well even sometimes three panels just focusing on james franco's face it sounds annoying but it's not so yeah i'm gonna have to go with film editing on that one and that may actually get it because i don't know i'm just kind of hoping king's speech doesn't get Everything. I mean, that was a fantastic movie. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. But I mean, I'm 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 hoping some other movie just kind of get it too. I'm hoping it's not a Lord of the Rings type situation. Foreign language film. Unfortunately, I haven't seen anything nominated in this category either. So, no opinion on that. Makeup. Only three things nominated for this. I've only seen one of them. There's Barney's version, The Way Back, neither of which I've seen or ever even heard of, and The Wolfman. The Wolfman, I'm actually kind of glad got an, uh, a nomination for its makeup because I don't think I've actually posted my review of The Wolfman yet, but the wolves, the werewolves in that movie, I don't think they were mostly CGI, it was mostly just makeup, 
They looked damn, damn good. I love the original feel of them, how they went back to really the look of the classic werewolves. So I guess I'm hoping that gets it, but I'm kind of biased because I haven't seen the other two movies nominated, but eh, let's give some love to good werewolves for once. Music. Original score. How to Train Your Dragon, Inception, The King's Speech, 127 Hours, and The Social Network. And this is another case where I think a certain movie missed out on a nomination wrongfully. Black Swan. Oh my god, the music was so good in that movie. I mean, why wasn't it nominated in this category? I know that some music was taken from Swan Lake, so I guess that makes it an unoriginal score, but they also kind of spruced up the music to, you know, just add... They didn't really remix it, they just made it sort of new. So, I, I personally wish that I had gotten a nomination. So, in that case, I'm going to have to go with Inception. I think I would have maybe even gone with Inception even if Black Swan's original score had been nominated. Because the music in Inception was just so, so magnificent and epic. God, I love that music in that movie. Hans Zimmer is just so freaking cool. As far as what's going to get it, I think Inception actually has a fairly decent chance of getting it in that category. I think there's some universal love for that score. Music! Original song. I've only seen two of the movies nominated in this category, but I've actually gone on YouTube and listened to all the songs, so I guess I'm informed for this category. There's Coming Home from Country, so Country Strong, excuse me. I See the Light from Tangled, If I Rise from 127 Hours, and We Belong Together from Toy Story 3. Uh, Country Strong and Tangled are the two movies I have not seen. Um, I don't want either of them to get it. Coming Home was, a uh, was a decent song, but I don't know, I don't know if I would describe it as Oscar-worthy. I See the Light, ooh, I don't like that type of music that much. So, no, I, I don't want that to get it. I'm gonna have to go with If I Rise for 127 Hours. That fit really well in the movie, and the song itself is very emotional, too. We Belong Together from Toy Story 3. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a decent song. It's average. I mean, there's nothing really special about it. Okay, short film, short film. Haven't seen any of the short films. I'm just gonna skip those. Sound editing. I guess... I mean, okay, the nominations, first of all. Inception, Toy Story 3, Tron Legacy, True Grit, and Unstoppable. I haven't seen Tron Legacy or Unstoppable, so no opinion on those. But I guess if it's between Toy Story 3, True Grit, and Inception, it would be Inception. Because, once again, I think the music and the sound of that movie really, really just... It was fantastic, and it really added to the mood and the atmosphere of the movie, so I'll go with Inception on that one. Not sure which one's gonna get that, though. Sound mixing, I don't really know. Inception, The King's Speech, Salt, Social Network, and True Grit. I guess I'll go with Inception again. Sure, why not? I don't really know how to judge that category. I'm not really a professional on sound mixing. Visual effects. Alice in Wonderland. The Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows, Hereafter, Inception, and Iron Man 2? Um, I watched part of Iron Man 2 and I didn't like it. I just can't get into that series. I, you know, I can't. It sucks. I hate it. I, uh, it just is so corny. I, I don't know why everyone loves that series so much, but I just don't like it. Hereafter, I've never even... Okay, I guess it sounds vaguely familiar, but I haven't seen it. You know my opinion on Alice in Wonderland. Harry Potter didn't really bring anything new to the table. Inception, the effects in that movie, the CGI was just so, so good. The first thing that comes to my mind is when Leonardo DiCaprio's character is showing the, you know, his little apprentice type girl. I forgot her name in the movie and her actual name. But when he's showing her just the limits of what you can do in dreams or whatever it was exactly, I forgot the specifics, and the whole like city is over them and he's sh showing her how to do that. That was cool. All the effects in that movie were really cool, so I'm gonna have to go with Inception on that. Don't know what's gonna get it. Alice in Wonderland is probably gonna get it. Ugh. 
writing adapted screenplay and writing original screenplay. To be honest, I don't have much of an opinion on these categories. I think adapted screenplay and original screenplay are probably really close, and since I'm not really a professional on screenplays, even if I plan on writing my own one time in the hopefully near future, I don't really know because I haven't read the screenplays for these movies, so no opinion on those, even if I've seen most of the movies nominated for each thing. The big one, Best Picture, and I've actually seen all the movies nominated in this category, so definitely informed we yeah. have. Black Swan, The Fighter, Inception, The Kids Are Alright, The King's Speech, 127 Hours, The Social Network, Toy Story 3, True Grit, and Winter's Bone. I personally, god, there are just so, so many good movies this year. And, I mean, even if I have some least favorites, each movie has been really good. Uh, so, it's kind of hard to decide on this, but I'm going to have to go with actually 127 hours. I would really like to see that guy picture. I think it's just because, I mean, that's a true story and it's so inspirational. And it, it really just has such an emotional impact on you. It's such an emotional ride. It's like buried, but happy. Um, so I would really like to see that get it. My second choice is probably The King's Speech because that was really, really good. Third would probably be either Black Swan or True Grit. I love both of those movies very, very, very much. But yeah, I would like to see 127 Hours get it, even though um, Slumdog Millionaire got it a couple of years ago. I think, I think Slumdog Millionaire got Best, best Picture two years ago, but I, I would still like to see it get that. I don't really care about politics in the Oscars, so, I mean, if something's good, if an actor or actress gave a really good performance, and if a movie is really good, that shouldn't matter. If the director got another movie Oscar a couple of years ago, or those actors and actresses got Oscars the year before, even if I said that about Jeff Bridges earlier, it should just be based on actual performance and quality. But, regardless, that's not what I'm getting into here and I'm getting off topic. Best Picture, 127 hours. I'd like to see that get it, even if I don't think it's going to get it. Um, what I think is probably going to get it is either The King's Speech or, unfortunately, The Social Network. See, I think The Social Network actually has a pretty good chance of getting it, but I hope it doesn't. The two movies I kind of hope don't get it are The Social Network and Winter's Bone. I didn't hate Winter's Bone, it was a very good movie, but it wasn't as good as I thought it would be and it didn't have a huge emotional impact. Same with Toy Story 3, actually. I liked that movie, but it didn't have, it, there was so much hype surrounding it, I was just kind of disappointed with it. The Social Network, though, my god, there's so much hype surrounding that movie. And even if it was a really good movie, it was like one of the most interesting movie that I've, uh, movies I've seen in a while, it's not best picture worthy, it's just not. There was absolutely no emotional impact that movie gave you. It was very, just, uh, it was, it had no emotion to it. I mean, it was a really good movie, but all of the other ones have some sort of emotional impact. Even Toy Story 3 and Winter's Bone, even if they didn't have quite as much of an emotional impact as I thought they would. But that movie just, I mean, I, I don't. I hope it doesn't get Best Picture, and I think the hype surrounding it is really undeserved. It's a really good movie, but it's not a genre-defining movie, okay? It's not. So, I would like 127 hours to get it, but The King's Speech or The Social Network will probably get it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are all the categories now. It'll be interesting to see now, after finally being informed after so many years of just rooting for one movie, one actor, one actress, etc. The Oscars usually throw people some sort of curveball for one of the major nominations, so I'm definitely, for once, like, going to be waiting to tune in to see the Oscars. Um, I look forward to it. I really do. I'm curious, but I'm sure it's, yeah, since the Oscars are partially political, let's face it, a lot of people aren't going to be happy with whatever wins either way. 
But, yeah, there we go. That's my Oscar prediction video. That's why I think we'll get it and what should get it. And if I happen to be right on everyone, then you heard it here first. So, see ya.